Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now one way to try and avoid the current exorbitant costs of building a PC is to purchase a pre-built. One system that seems to be inflation or out of stock proof is the Dell Precision T3500, an old workstation system that often comes with a quad-core Xeon processor and plenty of RAM, like this one. This T3500 cost me just under £100 and for that I got a Xeon W 3520, 12GB of DDR3 and a 500GB hard drive. More importantly though, I got a PC that works straight out of the box and requires very little effort to upgrade. But let's talk more about the specifications before figuring out if one of these is still worth it in early 2021. These specific models can be found with 2, 4 or 6 core processors and the specs will of course reflect the price. I went for this 4 core 8 threaded option because it provides the best balance between cost and performance and in a lot of cases it would be cheaper to buy a 6 core Xeon CPU to replace this quad core one than it would to pay the initial difference for a 6 core workstation right off the bat. You may have also noticed the graphics card in this thing as well which up to now has gone unmentioned. These old workstations often come with a Quadro GPU that in all honesty won't be up to much these days. These systems were never intended for gamers and this Quadro FX 1800 while good at workstation stuff back in the day I'm sure will struggle unless you're playing older DirectX 10 supported games. Here are a couple of test results I took before removing this thing. New Vegas will do quite well at 1080p medium settings with anti-aliasing turned off but then again it is a very old and very undemanding game but GTA 5 will struggle to maintain solid figures even when we're away from the busy streets of downtown Los Santos. Luckily with this workstation we've skipped the search for most core components but that still does leave us with a large elephant in the room. You're probably tired of hearing about all these GPU prices and stock and the whole situation is even more frustrating if you are actually trying to build a system right now. My advice is to either wait for the card you want to be in stock or drop in price, or if you are on a tighter budget, don't mind a bit of used market bargaining, but want the best that this PC in its stock state can handle, try and find a GTX 1650 or RX 570. Both of these are actually ideal here because not only will a more powerful option be overkill for the CPU in some gaming instances, but the T3500's stock power supply has just one 6-pin connector. Most if not all 1650s will work despite the tight fit and perhaps necessary removal of this ridiculous bracket, but the Pulse ITX RX 570 will be your best bet AMD wise as it requires just one 6 pin cable to function. We could potentially upgrade the PSU, swap in another CPU and a beefier graphics card, but for now we're seeing how this machine performs when going down the simplest way to upgrade route. So an 11 year old Xeon and a 4 gig 1650, what can they do? Well let me start by saying I've made the wrong choice. Honestly, I think the ITX 570 would be a better option here, it's just that the 1650 has more variants that will work with this machine straight out of the box, so while it's more accessible from that perspective, I'm still not all too happy with my choice. Starting with Valhalla, and it seems as though the last game patch has made some improvements to the performance. Here with the low settings, we were getting a 30 FPS plus experience with closer to 50 on average. There will be some dips here and there, but you could always turn things up to medium if you wanted to as well, and lock the frame rate to 30 FPS for better visual quality and a more stable overall experience. This Xeon is on par with an i7-920, a first generation Core i7 series chip, but where that might be overclockable on a better board with better cooling, we are more limited with this system overall. That being said, we did get the entire PC for less than the price of some x58 boards, so I can't complain too much. In Valhalla though, it looks as though the 1650 is the limiting factor, which is a surprise. Now the opposite is true in Cyberpunk 2077, we are sort of seeing a last gen console like experience as far as frame rate is concerned, but the processor is more problematic than the card. This is partly why I wouldn't recommend 
a more powerful graphics card in one of these PCs aside from the compatibility with the OEM PSU. The additional power in some cases just won't be utilised. It is still very early days for Cyberpunk though, so who knows how performance will change over the next few months. In GTA 5 we can still be very generous with the settings and hit 60 FPS on average. This makes a nice difference to the performance with the included Quadro GPU, which just about managed 30 FPS with 720p and low settings. I've thrown Kingdom Come Deliverance back into the benchmarks here too, as it is still quite intensive, especially in busier built up towns. 1080p at the medium settings was doable with a respectable frame rate, and this will increase to 60 in some places, namely quieter wooded areas and open fields. Thankfully, that's where I spend a lot of my game time. Perhaps the biggest surprise was Red Dead Redemption 2, which with the highest favour performance settings from the graphical menu, which combines ultra, high, medium and low, we hit 60 FPS on average. Even in busier towns, we still saw at least 30, and while our CPU usage got up to around 90% on occasion, the 1650 seemed to hover around the same figure, so I'd say that this pairing was pretty well balanced here. I'm glad we've got 12 gigs of RAM as well and not 8, as that probably helps. In Watch Dogs Legion, it seemed that sticking with low settings at 1080p was the best bet, and after running the in-game benchmark, the average came back at just over 40 FPS, with fairly stable 1.1% lows. In all honesty, while buying one of these machines right now could be a cheaper and easier way of getting into PC gaming, it's also more restrictive. These old 8 threaded Xeons certainly have held their own over the years though. It will also be interesting to see if we can swap out the normal PSU for a different one. Some old workstation machines, not necessarily Dell, use proprietary parts, but I've got a better Xeon and graphics card on the way anyway, so we'll perform a few upgrades at some point. A true Xeon enthusiast though might want to consider obtaining one of these chips with a better X58 board for overclocking, because as I said, this machine as a whole still does feel somewhat limiting, though buying parts separately will cost more. So this was just one example of an old workstation machine that you can find on eBay. There are going to be some better bargains to be had. Some six core workstations are available, of course. Some might not cost that much more to buy. Some might have totally different power supplies, but with these old workstations, it's always worth doing that extra bit of research just to make sure that whatever you want to do to it in terms of customization is going to be possible. For example, making sure that you've got a power supply that can perhaps be swapped out. Maybe if you're going to go with the OEM power supply, it has enough GPU connectors, things like that. Always check what CPU you can upgrade to as well, how much RAM you can add, things like that. Because if you get a good workstation, you can still make them pretty powerful, but if you get a bad one, then you're sort of stuck with it. That being said, though, I think this one still provides a decent enough path into entry level PC gaming, though, always check out what's on the market and how much things cost because there are still some surprising finds. With all that said then, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you still run with a Xeon build. Maybe you've got an overclocked Xeon on an X58 board, something like that. Let me know how it performs in games. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.